This is a screen replacement tutorial for Acer Aspire, model number 4743Z-4861. The only tools that you'll need for this, small Phillips screwdriver, and a pick, a needle, or a sharp knife to remove little plastic plugs covering up two screws on the screen bezel. Of course we're going to start by removing the power plug and since it's simple to do on this we're also going to remove the battery. The only screws that need to be removed to take the bezel out are located in the bottom corners of the screen right here and right over here. They're covered up with little plastic caps uh, adhesive backed, so you'll need to use again a pick or something, uh, you know, carefully use a sharp knife to pry out the little plastic caps at each of these two points. With the covers out of the way, you can take your Phillips screwdriver and remove these two screws. Now that the two screws have been removed from the bottom of the bezel, we can remove the bezel itself from the outside of the frame. The plastic clips that hold the bezel in place are very delicate, so just be very careful as you work your way around. Start by working on the inside lip of the bezel. And once that is popped loose as much as you can, all the way around, then you can start to work on the outside. And just be very careful as you pop the clips off the bezel. The bezel is now fully unclipped all the way around the perimeter. We need to carefully lift off the little hinge covers that are attached to the outside of the bezel and get it off over the hinge. And then you can take the bezel and set it aside. With the bezel removed, we have exposed four screws, one in each of the four corners. We'll be removing those in a moment. First we need to disconnect two electrical connections. We have one up here at the top that hooks up to the webcam. We have one down here at the bottom, little white connector, that goes to the microphone up at the top of the screen. The wiring for the webcam itself is a little ribbon cable coming in here from the left hand side. You'll be able to carefully grasp the ribbon cable and pull it out going in that direction. And that's about as far as it will go. The rest of the ribbon cable is adhered to the back side of the screen with two-sided tape. Now we're going to disconnect the little white wiring connector block right here that connects the wires up to the microphone at the top of the screen. Here we have a close-up of that little wiring connector. These are very delicate wires. So we're going to very carefully pull the little connector out of its bracket and very carefully separate one end from the other. And now that we have the microphone connector separated, we can very carefully pull this wire out from its little retention brackets as well, all the way across. And at this point, we're now ready to remove the four screws in each of the four corners. When the fourth screw is removed, you'll notice that the back plastic cover on the screen will actually separate away from the glass screen itself and the glass screen is what's attached to the main hinge. So don't let the black plastic fall. You need to support it. We need to get to the back side and take off that wiring, that little ribbon cable that's attached to the back side of the glass here. We're going to carefully fold the screen down. With the screen gently closed we can now lift up on the black plastic cover on the back of the screen and it will carefully be lifted up. Don't open it up too far or too hard. We do still have wires connected here and here that come for the Wi-Fi antenna. Here we can see the ribbon cable that's attached to the back of the screen that comes up to the webcam. As before, they're delicate wires, so we want to remove them very carefully from the back of the screen itself. And then we can just gently lay that forward 
Here we have a close-up of the video connector itself going to the back of the screen. Ribbon cable coming in, the connector block itself. It's adhered on both sides of the connector with a piece of tape on this side and double stick tape on the back of the ribbon cable. And we're going to have to very carefully lift both of them up to separate the connector itself. Start with a fingernail or if you need be a knife to lift up on the tape on the front side of the connector. And just lift it very carefully. We're not trying to completely remove the connector right now. Just free the tape. Holding it up, we can come over here and very carefully lift up, separating the adhesive on the back side of the ribbon cable itself to this point. Now it is no longer held in place by adhesive on either side. We're going to carefully remove the ribbon by pulling it in that direction away from the connector block. The screen is mounted into a supporting frame using four screws going into the side of the frame here, here, one coming in over here, and one coming in here. Now's the time to remove those. With the four corner screws removed, the screen is now completely free from its surrounding framework. You can carefully lift it up and set it aside. Carefully remove the replacement screen from its packaging. This one comes with a little screen protector. We're going to remove the screen protector because these uh, bits of tape here on the side are going to get in the way of the attachment of the side of the screen with the supporting framework. To protect the new screen while working on it, we'll take that same screen protector and just lay it down onto the keyboard. And then we can bring the new screen in now that the tape has been removed from the edges and lay it carefully down inside the metal frame that's still attached to the hinges. Now that the four screws have been reinstalled, we're now ready to reconnect our video connector at the ribbon cable. Here we have a close-up of the video connector itself on the back side of this new screen. It is of course a very delicate connection and here is its mate on the ribbon cable. What I find is easiest to get the two to line up and get them connected is to hold this piece of tape and use it to guide the connectors together and just try to get them as parallel as possible and then slide them straight together. Once the video cable has been reconnected, carefully re-adhere the piece of tape to the back of the new screen and then press down the adhesive on the back of the ribbon cable to hold it in place as well. We can reconnect the ribbon cable that comes up here to the top of the screen for the webcam. And now at this point we can raise the screen itself up. We can raise the back of the screen cover up and we're going to meet the two of them together. And again, take special extra care down in these bottom corners to make sure the wiring is not being pinched. When the holes line up with the pegs, we can take our screws and carefully reattach the screen and the screen frame to the back of the screen cover. All four screws are now in place, top and bottom. We can reconnect our microphone cable here and carefully put this cable bundle back into its little retention clips all the way across the bottom. Before reinstalling the bezel, we might check and make sure that the new screen is working and is connected correctly. So we can pop our power plug back in and we'll boot it up temporarily just to see if the screen comes up as normal. So you can hit the power button. And since we see that the screen is working, we can hold the power button down, power the computer off. Reinstallation of the bezel is a straightforward affair. We do have these curved hinge covers here. We need to carefully get them back over the top of the hinges on either side and then carefully work all the way around the outside of the bezel and very carefully popping all those clips back in. With the screws now reinstalled, we can take the little plastic adhesive covers and put them carefully back in place to conceal the screws on each side.